This video begins with a brief overview of health history taking, followed by the anatomy of the peripheral vascular system, including the arteries, veins, and lymph nodes in the arms and legs, followed by examination of the peripheral vascular system, including veins and arteries of the arms, hands, legs, ankles, and feet, inspection and palpation of the superficial inguinal nodes, and assessment for chronic arterial insufficiency. We conclude the video with tips on describing your findings. You will see the examiner assess a healthy patient. In clinical practice, you may detect the same normal findings, or you may discover normal variations or abnormal findings. The Health History Interview is a conversation with a threefold purpose to establish a trusting and supportive relationship, to gather information, and to offer information. In the case of new patients, you will gather information that will form the basis for a comprehensive written health history. For patients seeking care for a specific complaint, you may prepare a more focused, problem-oriented history. In either case, you will record the patient's chief complaint along with common or concerning symptoms. Common or concerning symptoms relating to the peripheral vascular system include pain in the arms or legs, intermittent claudication, cold, numbness, or pallor in the legs, hair loss in the extremities, color change in fingertips or toes in cold weather, swelling in calves, legs, or feet, and swelling with redness or tenderness. By eliciting the patient's concerns before the examination, you prepare for an examination that is efficient and productive. Take all your clothes off except for your underpants and then put the gown on so the open part is to the rear and then I'll come back in and take a look. With the patient's health history in mind, you are now ready to continue your examination. Before proceeding, however, let's briefly review the anatomy of the peripheral vascular system. The peripheral vascular system consists of the various structures involved in circulation to the arms and legs, including the arteries, the veins, the capillary bed that connects them, and the lymphatic system with its lymph nodes. Arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart. When arteries lie close to the body's surface, you can feel their pulsation. In the arms, arterial pulses are palpable in three locations. The brachial pulse can be felt at and above the bend of the elbow, medial to the biceps tendon and the muscle. The radial pulse can be felt on the flexor surface of the wrist laterally. The ulnar pulse may be felt on the flexor surface of the wrist medially. However, Overlying tissues frequently obscure this pulse. The arterial arches interconnect the radial and ulnar arteries and help protect hand and finger circulation from arterial occlusion. In the legs, arterial pulses can usually be felt in four places. The femoral artery in the groin, the popliteal artery behind the knee, the dorsalis pedis artery on the dorsum of the foot, and the posterior tibial artery behind the medial malleolus of the ankle. An interconnecting arterial arch protects the circulation of the foot. Veins, which may be deep or superficial, carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Because the veins of the leg are especially susceptible to dysfunction, they warrant special attention. Deep leg veins include the femoral vein, which lies just medial to the femoral artery, below the inguinal ligament. Superficial leg veins include the great saphenous vein, which runs from the dorsum of the foot to the groin, and the small saphenous vein, which runs from the side of the foot to the back of the knee. Communicating veins interconnect the deep and superficial veins. Lymph nodes are normally round, oval, or bean-shaped structures. In the arms, the epitrochlear nodes, lateral axillary nodes, and central axillary nodes are palpable. 
In the legs, usually only the superficial inguinal nodes are palpable. These nodes are divided into two groups. The vertical group, clustered over the upper part of the great saphenous vein, and the horizontal group, which lies high in the anterior thigh below the inguinal ligament. To examine the peripheral vascular system, begin by inspecting both arms from the fingertips to the shoulders. Note areas of edema, discoloration, rashes, scars, and changes in skin texture. None are seen here. Also note hair distribution and venous patterns. Assess the skin temperature of the hands and lower arms with the sensitive backs of your fingers, comparing both sides. If you detect unusual coolness or temperature differences, check further up the arms. Next, palpate the radial pulses using the pads of your fingers on the flexor surface of the wrist laterally. Compare their amplitudes. A grade of 2 plus indicates a brisk or normal pulse. A grade of 0 indicates an arterial pulse that is absent and not palpable. A grade of 1 plus indicates a pulse that is diminished, weaker than expected. Grade 3 plus indicates a pulse which is increased, that is, above what is expected. While grade 4 plus indicates bounding and possible aortic insufficiency. If you suspect arterial insufficiency in an arm or hand, partially flex the wrist and try to palpate the ulnar pulse on the flexor surface of the wrist. Note that the pulse of a normal ulnar artery may not be palpable. Palpate the brachial pulse by flexing the patient's elbow slightly. Then, with the thumb or fingertips of your opposite hand, palpate the pulse at the antecubital crease just medial to the biceps tendon. Palpate the radial pulses as well. In the right hand. To help determine the patency of the ulnar artery, perform the Allen test. Place your thumbs lightly over the radial and ulnar arteries and tell the patient to clench his fist tightly. Then firmly compress both arteries with your thumbs and fingers. Have the patient open and relax his hand. Note the color of his palms and fingers, which should be pale. Then release the pressure over just the ulnar artery. If the artery is patent, the palm should turn pink in three to five seconds. To assess the patency of the radial artery when indicated, repeat these steps, but this time release the pressure over the radial artery. Now let the fingers open. Good. Next, try to feel for one or more of the epitrochlear nodes. With the patient's elbow flexed at approximately 90 degrees and your hand supporting the forearm, Feel in the groove between the biceps and triceps muscles, about 3 centimeters above the medial epicondyle. Repeat on the other arm. If the epitrochlear node is palpable, note its size, consistency, and tenderness. To examine the legs, the patient should be lying down and draped so that the genitalia are covered, but the legs are fully exposed. Socks or stockings should be removed. Inspect both legs, from the groin to the toes, noting symmetry in size, shape, and color. Also, note areas of swelling, discoloration, rashes, scars, ulcers, and abnormal venous patterns. On the lower legs, feet, and toes, Observe the color and texture of the skin and nail beds, and the distribution of hair. Assess the skin temperature of the feet and lower legs with the back of your fingers. If you notice unusual coolness or temperature differences, check further up the legs. Next, palpate the superficial inguinal nodes 
including the horizontal group and the vertical group. Note the size, consistency, discreteness, and tenderness of any palpable nodes. Small, mobile, non-tender inguinal nodes are often palpable in normal adults. Examine the opposite inguinal area in the same way. Next, palpate the femoral pulse by placing your fingers midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the symphysis pubis. Press deeply below the inguinal ligament. When palpating the femoral pulse, if the patient is very obese, you may need to place one hand on top of the other, as demonstrated here, to facilitate examination of the femoral pulse and inguinal area. I'm going to check the pulses in your knee now. You just relax. To examine the popliteal pulse, slightly flex the patient's knee. Press the fingertips of both hands deeply into the popliteal fossa, slightly lateral to the midline. The popliteal pulse is frequently more difficult to find than other pulses because it is deeper and more diffuse. I'm going to check the other leg now. Okay. Compare this pulse with the popliteal pulse on the other side. Can you just relax? If the popliteal pulse is difficult to find, try this approach. With the patient prone, flex his knee to 90 degrees. Let his lower leg relax against your shoulder or upper arm and press your thumbs deeply into the popliteal fossa. Next, assess the rosalis pedis pulse by palpating the dorsum of the foot just lateral to the extensor tendon of the big toe. If you cannot feel the pulse, move laterally. The dorsalis pedis pulse may be congenitally absent. Check the posterior tibial pulse by curving your fingers behind and slightly below the medial malleolus of the ankle. Then feel for both of these pulses on the other foot. Now check for edema, comparing one foot and ankle with the other. Note their relative size and the prominence of veins, tendons, and bones. To detect pitting edema, press firmly with your thumb for at least five seconds over the dorsum of the feet, behind the medial malleoli. and over the shins. Note any indentation caused by your thumb pressure. Normally, as seen here, there is no pitting edema. Next, palpate the calf muscles by compressing them against the tibia. Do you feel any tenderness in these muscles? No. Note any tenderness, increased firmness, or tension of the muscles that might suggest deep venous thrombosis. Then check for edema and palpate the calf muscle of the other leg. If the patient's diminished pulses or pain on walking suggest arterial insufficiency, look for postural color changes using the following technique. Elevate and support degrees. both legs to a position about 60 degrees above the examination table. Wait 30 to 60 seconds until the feet are drained of venous blood. Mild pallor of the elevated feet is normal, but watch for unusual pallor. I have to hold them there for 30 seconds. Then ask the patient to sit up with his legs dangling. All right, now sit up. Comparing both feet, note how long it takes for the skin to return to its usual color normally about 10 seconds, and for the veins of the feet and ankles to fill, usually about 15 seconds. If pinking cannot be seen, use venous filling instead. In lighter skinned patients, pinking of the skin is easily seen. Ruber or dusky redness, which may appear gradually in dependent feet, suggests poor arterial circulation. To complete the examination, ask the patient to stand in order to allow any varicosities to fill with blood and become more visible. Then inspect the saphenous system for varicosities, noting any signs of thrombophlebitis. Any tenderness in this area? No. Or in here? No. Look for redness or discoloration 
and feel for tenderness and chords. And